This is chapter 6.3, exercise 45 through 50. This section of the book has to do with parametric equations and real world uses. And we're going to do these odd number problems 45, 47, and 49. Now, problem 45 presupposes uh, problem exercise 44. And so, uh, hitting a baseball, suppose that the moment Kirby hits the ball in exercise 44, there's a 5 foot per second split second wind gust. Assume the wind acts in the horizontal direction, out with the ball, and then conditions for exercise 44 below. And so, what we have here is the parametric equations, and I'm going to go ahead and convert this 44. We have x equals, we have... 120 feet per second and then cosine is let's say cosine theta is horizontal direction and sine theta is uh, vertical up and down so x equals 120 and that's going to be, we have an angle, I'm going to draw it down here, an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. So that's the initial angle of incidence is going to come like this. And clear fence or not clear fence, you got some fence out here. And since we have an angle of incidence of 30 degrees, we're going to multiply this by cosine of 30 degrees. And that's going to be times T. And then we have a 5 foot per second split second wind gust, so we're going to add 5 to that. Now, uh, for Y, we're going to have uh, hits a ball when it is four feet above the ground, so we start at four feet above the ground, four plus, and then we're going to take this 120 sine 30 degrees T, and then minus the position with time due to the force of gravity, so we're going to have minus 16 T squared. So this is going to be, and this plus 5 down here, and excuse me, it's going to be plus 5 uh, split second wind gust. So I think it's going to be, it's going to be plus 5 T, I believe, is what it's going to do. So we'll say that's going to push for the whole duration, so split second. Well, it's going to push it at that rate, such that it's just going to go farther. And so putting these equations in the calculator, we we'll, should be able to answer the problem here. We go to our calculator, and we get a, we're in a graph page, graph parametric. We go to graph entry parametric equation. So we go to 120 times cosine 30 degrees. Now, we notice that we are in radians here. Fortunately, we can override that radians by just putting in a symbol for degree. And if we press the, the, key, the pi key down here, we can get that symbol for degree and then multiply this by t and then we're going to also add 5t to that for that wind gust and down below we're going to have 4 plus 120 uh, times the sine t sine of uh, 30 degrees and again we've got to put that degree symbol or else we'll be in radians And that's going to be T minus the effect of gravity minus 16T squared. And this 
minus 16 t squared should be something to remember. And so we're going to go, the time is right, we're going to t step, uh, we're going to go by 0 0.04 seconds. That tends to work. And so if we just go ahead and graph from here, we see the initial off the bat like this. And if we go to menu window, we can we can just adjust our window settings. X min is fine. We got a wall, I think it's 400 feet away, is it? Uh, no. It says 350 feet away from home plate. So we'll put 370 out there. Give ourselves some room. So 370. Come down here, tab, uh, Y minimum, that's going to be fine. Y max, I don't know how high it's going to go. I'll put 80 feet high. I hope that gets it. Let me press OK. Yeah, it looks like we get it just fine. And we got a 30 foot high fence. So uh, let's go ahead and trace. We'll put menu trace. And we're trying to see if we clear that fence. So here we go. And if so, by how much? So it's a 30 foot fence. Here we're up to a max height of about 60 feet. And yeah, a little over 60 feet, 6.2 feet. And we're coming down now. We're looking for that 30 foot fence. Okay, we're at 37. Okay, 30.4. And that's 350 feet away. 349 is 32.2, so that's going to be closer. So we'll estimate that we're going to clear that fence. The answer is yes, and we'll say a little over two feet because at 349 and then at 350 we'll be right at two. So we'll say about two feet. So yes, the answer is yes. Clears the fence, and by how much? About two feet. And obviously, the ball will not be able to be caught. It's a home run for Kirby because of the wind. If you look at problem 44, I think you actually don't clear the fence. It makes a difference. Next. Another number problem we're looking at is uh, problem 47. Tony and Sue are launching yard darts 20 feet from the front edge of circular target radius, 18 inches on the ground. If Tony throws the dart vertically, directly at the target and releases it three feet above ground with an initial velocity of 30 feet per second at a 70 degree angle, will the dart hit the target? So what you're doing is you're setting up a, a dart throwing thing here and you have a target. I'm going to just put a little bullseye right over here. That's it says the the uh, front edge target of radius 18 inches. So that's going to be a diameter equals three feet. Right, 18 inches is one foot and a half. And so um, let's see, it says. 20 feet from the front edge of a circular target. So this distance here, right here is 20 feet. Okay. And Tony is just three feet above ground level here. And it's going like, like this at a 70. And so Will it hit the target? We're just going to go ahead and write the equation. So the equation is going to be x equals, uh, we're going to have how many feet per second does it say? 30 feet per second. And it's going to be times cosine of 70 degrees. And x is rated to cosine and times t. So this is going to account for the horizontal movement. For the vertical movement, we have y equals 30 times sine 
uh, 70 degrees times T, but we have a couple other things to factor in here, don't we? We know that he is uh, it's going to be released three feet off the ground, so that's going to be plus three. And then uh, if we didn't have gravity, the thing would just keep on going, but we know we're going to have negative 16 T squared. So this is going to be our parametric equation for this. So let's just go get another page in our calculator. Control I. Add graph. Menu 3, 4. And we're going to have for x component 30 times cosine of 70 degrees is our angle of incidence. And since we're in radians, when we graph, we got to go ahead and make sure we override the radians by making the degree symbol times the parameter t. And for y, we're going to have 30 times the sine of 70 degrees. Again, we get the degree symbol. times t plus three feet for three for three feet off the ground minus sixteen t squared. And if you doubt that this makes a difference, if you put it in your calculator without the radiance, without the degree symbol, you will see a big difference. I think six point two eight seconds should be plenty. Let's go ahead and change the, the t step to 0 0.04. And then we go ahead and press enter. This is what we get, high angle of incidence. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, change the uh, window zoom. So we got four window settings. We'll go from, we can just go from zero. And we know we have to go to a target that's 20 feet away, was it? Let's go ahead, I'll put in 25. That should be plenty. And then our Y minimum, we can put at the negative 6, that would be fine. Our maximum, we could put up here at about maybe you know, 20 feet. And if we go down here, press enter, yeah, so this will be just fine. So we'll be able to trace and figure out. And we're trying to see if, again, to remember, if we hit the target and we have 20 feet to go. So let's go ahead and put in our calculator trace graph trace so here we are going to the right okay we are okay now here we are at a height of 0.7 feet and we almost and we're 18.9 feet away and then here we are at a height of negative point so we've gone down below ground we're only 19 uh, 0.3 feet away. So we only go about 19 feet. So we're going to miss that front edge of the target by about one foot. So if 20, a little darker, no. Uh, and the dart misses by about one foot. We'll say it will be more if it falls about one foot in front of target. Okay, so that'll be our answer for problem 47. And I believe when you go to problem 48, it's very much related to problem 47 in that you, uh, it'll be problem 47, but the dart released four feet above the ground, and the uh, and 25 feet per second, and an angle of incidence of 55 degrees instead of 70 degrees. So, just take that data you did in problem 47, make those changes in the equation. Uh, you'll see if we get a different answer or the same answer. So, again, this is mainly about. Hey, how, understanding how to uh, construct a parametric equation for a trajectory situation and 
So they use the calculator appropriately. Problem 49, hitting a baseball. Orlando hits a ball when it's four feet above the ground level with initial velocity of 160 feet per second. So we should already know what that looks like. That's going to be x equals 160 times cosine. And then we look at that angle of incidence, which is going to be 20 degrees. So cosine 20 degrees and times t. Okay. And that's going to be it for x. For y, we have the same thing, 160, but times the sine of 20 degrees times t. And also, we are four feet above ground, so plus four. And we also have minus 16 t squared. And we're trying to get 400, fence 400 feet away. And let's just go and analyze that situation first. Then, then we're going to be asked a, a question relative to that initial situation. So we come to our calculator, we go to Control I, Add Graph, go to Menu, 3, 4, and we're going to put in 160 times cosine of 20 degrees, and again the degree symbol is right here, times T, and then for the y component we have also 160 but instead of cosine we have sine and we have again 20 degrees and it's going to be times t and you're going to be coming from four feet off the ground minus gravity pulling the baseball back to the ground and uh, we have 6.28 seconds is plenty of time. We're going to T step of 0 0.04. I've seen 0 0.05 work pretty well too. Anyway, we graph this parametric equation. This is what it looks like here. Okay. So now let's go to window settings. Let's go to menu four. And we're just press enter. We're going to manually set, go to zero. The ball is about, uh, we'll put 440. The fence is 400 feet away. Auto, X scale. Uh, y minimum, that'll be a good Y minimum. Y maximum, we can put 60 feet. I think that's going to work for this one, as I recall. So here we have, we have a good uh, height here. Let me see how far, how high that fence is. We have a 30 foot fence 400 feet away from home plate. Okay, so now we can trace, see what's going on. Okay, menu, analyze graph, trace. Oops, trace is five, graph trace. There we go. And we'll just go over here. Okay, I think we're going to extend here. So now, 400 feet away, even close to 400 feet away. Okay, between 397 feet, or 37 feet in elevation, 403 feet, we're 35.7 feet in elevation. So we are, we have cleared the fence. And so what you're trying to find is let's go ahead and see when that, we're trying to find when that ball is going to hit the top of the fence. So right here is about as close we can get. So 427 feet away that ball is gonna is gonna hit at a fence about thirty point four 
feet. So that's about the top of the fence. If we go to 433, we're below. So closest is going to be this. So look at the time we took. We took 2.84 seconds. Okay. And we are about, we'll say we're about 30 feet away from the fence. And to hit the top of the fence, we're going to have to have a wind blowing in. And so this 30 feet, let's see, the amount of time is 2.88, right? So we'll say 2.88. So we, we're going to cover 30 feet in 2.88 seconds. So we're coming back here. Let's go. We'll have 30 feet by 2.88 seconds. And what that's going to give us is the is how much wind force we're going to have to to go in. So so again, just to draw a sketch, we have a ball hit four feet off the ground. Comes like this, and here we have a we have a fence that's 30 feet off the ground. And graphically, we have to have a wind vector blowing back this way, such that the real the path is going to be stunted and hit the top. So that's going to be kind of a graphical demonstration if not an estimate and again this fence is 400 feet away so let's take this 30 divided by 2.88 so we got a your page so you have 30 divided by 2.88 and we get 10.4. That'll be about 10.4 feet per second. Okay, and this will be algebraic solution really it'll be the the wind blowing in inward at about 10.4 feet per second will make the ball ball hit near the top of the fence. should make sense, right? So, uh, and the last one we're not going to do is problem 50. You have hitting golf balls, and basically these are four separate problems. And seeing how far away that golf ball hits the ground, depending on the angle of trajectory. And so you're going to be setting up four different parametric equations. Well, you set up one and just change the angles for each one to get your and, and, and evaluate to get your correct answer. So anyway, these are all the odd number problems worked out. Good luck. And as always, thanks for viewing.